Hey everybody, welcome to Queer Stories on the Swan, a podcast where two gay men chat and discuss all things queer in the Perth LGBTQIA plus community. I'm your host, Chris. And I'm your other host, Christo. In today's episode, it's all about us. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey, Christo, guess what? Hey, what? We're recording our first episode. This is the oh pilot, Oh my God, baby. this is so exciting. This is the pilot of Queer Stories on the Swan. We are actually doing this. I mean, we just put out the trailer wow. like yesterday, but, yeah, but, well, actually, okay. it depends when we get this uploaded. So very recently, yeah. the trailer came yes. out. Um, yes. So I've got my cup of English tea for the morning. On the um, 28th of the 1st. Oh, you're, you're, dat- you're, you're dating us now. So we, we, yeah. we, we, we don't know. Oh, sorry, that was yesterday if we wanted to <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you mean the try? Oh, yep. <laughs> girl, this is why I need my tea. Wake up, <laughs> my caffeine. Okay, well, so to save this garbage dump of an intro, uh, thanks to me. <laughs> Hi, guys. So you heard the intro. This is Queer Stories on the Swine. This is Chris, and I'm Christo. Woo-hoo. <laughs> and um, so today's episode, um, this is just a simply get to know us. It is just a family episode um because you know we're, we're the i feel like i'm the mum of the show because like like it was my idea and i came to you you're like the aunt you're like the really <laughs> fun aunt like you spoil the kids <laughs> rotten because you have like so much energy and then i have to do all the dirty work because i'm editing it i'm putting it out there on anchor i'm, I'm changing it i'm feeding it Ugh. children okay. um and that's the only child i'm going to be handling <laughs> ever because children no thank you um so, oh my god i've got a puppy so it's fine <laughs> i know that's, 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 that's the only kind of dogger I, I mean i've got i've got a dog doggy here her um i've got a greyhound her name is lady uh, very classy name um so yeah. so this show um is we're discussing all these queer ideally we want to have a guest um every episode but we'll see what happens with scheduling and everything uh, to talk yeah. about their life story growing up queer what uh what it was like for them the difficulties um, uh, how they've uh, improved their life, um, if things have improved for them, uh, any advice they want to uh, bestow on people who are yep. who are still coming out, um, who, are, yeah. who are young and still figuring that out, because yeah. that's a fun time. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, we'll get into that. So, but this episode is just Christo and I, and this is Yay. an opportunity for you to get to know us if you don't already. Yes. Like I'm, yeah, I'm pretty well. sure most of our friends are listening in, but hey. <laughs> Any new listeners who has no idea who we are, and who the a couple, hell we are, <laughs> we're just a couple of gay voices. Hope you're not too annoyed yet, um, because we got a whole episode to get through. <laughs> you're gonna listen to us for a long time, for a long time. Uh, but thank you if you are, we really appreciate the support. Yeah. So, Christo, yeah, who, who wants to begin talking about themselves? Which is so funny asking a gay man <laughs> that because we are incredibly full of ego. And love to chat yeah. about ourselves it's all like the time. What we do, yeah, we, we do. We're, 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 just, we're not we're talking just... about ourselves. We're not talking. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Which is so. I'm just thinking. Is this a problem that I organised this podcast with another gay man? Um, no, it's okay. Oh dear, it's all good. It's too, it's too late. It's too late. I've already set this up. <laughs> the ship so, has sailed. Do you want to begin, Christo, or shall I? You can begin. I'll begin. Okay. Yeah. Mama All can right. begin. <laughs> Mum, mum's first. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Very well. So I'm, I'm going to do Sophia from the Golden Girls. Um, although that does make me sad to do this because it's still recently when that happened. Anyway, I want to talk about it. Um, no. I'm going to be no. so. I'm, I'm going to be Sophia from the Golden Girls. Picture okay. it. Perth, 1995. <laughs> love it <laughs> oh god i love that show so much i'll start watching it so again good soon. so um yeah. so hi um by the way i forgot to do the pronouns thing so my name is chris oh. my pronouns are he him and his christo do you just want to get yours out of the way um anything okay. i've never really thought about it so yeah he him they them cool yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, hey, you. <laughs> yeah, hey, you. Um, thing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's, that's what I tell myself. Um, <laughs> anyhow, so, so yeah, Perth, 1995. Um, I was born um, in Murdoch. So I'm a local boy. Um, always been a local boy. boy. I, I, I have lived here all my life. Um, wow. And I, I was born and grew up with, um, and still have it, um, I have autism. <laughs> Um, so 
there was a lot of things growing up that was rather difficult for me. Um, mm-hmm. My young self was definitely the embodiment of uh, being an introvert because yep. people who were not my parents, <laughs> especially my mom, um, were terrifying. Like, you know, you, you yeah. always get the shy kid who is always hiding behind their mom's or parents' leg, you know, as this, yeah. this like, oh, hello, you know, this, like at, at this, <laughs> yeah. this crazy person just gawking at them. Um, <laughs> like, but I would be so extremely shy. Like anyone would be just like, no, oh my God. no. Yeah. Um, children, however, were a lot worse. Children, I kid you not. Do you, do you want to know what my reaction would be to other children? Well, take a wild guess. <laughs> run and hide <laughs> that and then and then proceed to chuck oh my god serious children gave me that anxiety that oh i just could not deal with children <laughs> oh wow i mean i still can't but i don't i don't vomit <laughs> i mean they might make me gag sometimes but that's that's because i'm a cynical horrible adult um <laughs> but yeah (laughs) yeah so so growing up was very difficult in terms of like um uh, social anxiety um i did have to go through uh, speech therapy um so i had to do a lot of growing um and uh, throughout schooling um primary school was was generally a fine experience for me still very very shy um very much a uh uh overachiever when it came to things i was good at i was good at mental yeah. maths like like the oh. quick quick uh, uh, uh calculations you know four times four you know, all that kind of thing Smarty pants. i was i was also very much a great speller yeah thank you sorry yes <laughs> are you are you being just getting my man to close the door uh uh <laughs> the puppy rude. was in here but he's not anymore mm. so i'm like close the door <laughs> <laughs> out of my lights so i can't move hello chris Joe's partner um so <laughs> yeah uh, where was i um yeah oh my god super great speller and oh. i because <laughs> you had spelling tests back in school yeah that was that was that was a thing back in oh my god i'm not that old I'm, yes. I'm just i'm just checking <laughs> i'm making sure i am trying not to presume but i'm not no, i had old, to trace it sweetie. on concrete <laughs> <laughs> I had to chip it on on sketchings the hieroglyphics yeah. back in the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, okay. So you did have them. Uh, so yeah. did I. If I got I like a, like a word, and usually be like uh, out of ten, out of ten words. Mm. Um, if I didn't get them all, um, oh god. Oh really? Oh I was god. such a perfectionist because it was the one thing I was good oh. at. I was not good at sports. Um, um, being social <laughs> with other children. I mean, I've moved past the vomiting stage, but like, ugh, still, <laughs> still <laughs> ill children, still, still, still ick. Um, like Even though social... they're the same age as you. <laughs> uh, yeah, because they're just confronting. Yeah. They just, they just want to like be friends with Play. me. Um, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I didn't really know how to do a lot of like social things because that's that's just part of the. Well, it's part of the thing growing up autistic, but then you know you do go through therapy and and life experiences. What kind of helps with that in the end? Um, mm. Um, but you know, it, it still can be difficult to deal with. Um, but your primary school overall was, was fine. High yep. school. <laughs> Every kid's worst nightmare. I mean, yeah, I know it's, I know it's middle school, um, uh, and then senior school, but I count it all as high school. It's primary school and it's high school to me. That's, that's just yeah. how I class that's what it, it is as. now, I think. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, because, um, cause I went to, uh, um, my high school in year seven and at that time it, it wasn't the 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 it thing you just do mine. yeah, yeah. Oh, did really what was yeah year seven was the end of primary school and you graduated and you went to yeah well that, that high was school. Well, that middle was, school yeah well that was to year the, nine that, yeah. that was and that was the my year 10 was well. high school yeah was... yeah well then <laughs> well because yeah because our middle school was seven eight nine and then senior was 10 11 12 um yeah. but i actually did it I left the end of year six and went straight to year seven in middle school. Okay. So I did it before it was cool um, oh. and, and, and required by, you know, law. Um, yeah. <laughs> before it was officially changed. Um, and, you know, as you're a kid growing up with puberty, you start to learn things about yourself. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking about my first time when I uh, uh, exercised. Um <laughs> <laughs> what? No, 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 the first time I'm, I'm trying to make this a family friendly show i don't want to outright say what i was doing i was stroking okay 
<laughs> is that on the nose enough for you, Christo? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So you're exploring. And yourself. in I remember in my head, it wasn't girls. It was boys. Ooh. It was boys. I didn't think too much of it at the time because okay. <laughs> oh god, what was that? It was so loud. <laughs> oh sorry, that was me opening my thing. That's right, I'll just turn down the volume. <laughs> okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um but yeah, so um, I was just like, oh, okay, I, I'm picturing boys in my head. Um, and it was just, <laughs> it's, it's like you're flushing toilet. <laughs> I'm just trying to pour my drink. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Do you, want me to, do you want me to pause my story so you can pour your drink? You can okay, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're all good, Dove. Okay. okay. You're all good, Dove. This is a podcast. We've got no time limit. I mean, exactly. you do, you do, but I've got a little time in the world. So, hey, if you want to keep interrupting me, that's up to you. Um, <laughs> I will. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was a, a, a interesting thing to, to have in the back of my mind. Mm. But, you know, being gay was just something you didn't want to acknowledge. Um, my school was a private Christian school. Oh, it was a Baptist college, actually um so there wasn't anything talked about when it came to uh, queer people or being gay or anything but you know how many times has it been used as an insult like oh that thing's so gay oh that, like, that's, that's so gay um so yeah. being gay was such a like uh thing that i just i just didn't want to i already did not like a lot of attention because a lot of attention yeah. it was something i didn't know how to handle and then i would feel really awkward yeah. Um, so that was that was an interesting time for me. But another interesting time with me was when I was realizing that I'm a dramatic gay person, or I'm, oh. more specifically, I'm just a gay person, um, <laughs> because my love of drama came in. Like drama was Ooh. one of them. Like you had to do it. It was one of the mandatory classes. And oh my mm. god, like giving speeches in high school, uh, in private mm. school. Mm. Oh, mm. Nah. Well, speeches in general, any like public speaking, I was talking about a book yeah. report or anything, even telling like because we had like show and tell in primary school, or we called it yeah. news. Um, <laughs> you had was it news for you? It was like show and tell or something else. Um, I don't remember. I, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> um, I'm surprised. I do remember. I'm surprised. I remember. <laughs> just just public speaking in general was just yep. like no, no, thank yeah. you. So, exactly the same um drama and having to perform and, and make yourself look like oh. an idiot on camera no thank you no, really thank you not at all wow um however um uh, so one of our first assessments uh sorry t- uh assignments uh anyway passing things you have to pass <laughs> um we had to play a piece of furniture um just to keep it short um i chose to play a door i was just me in a cardboard cutout and i would tell a story about how people would constantly slam me because they're inconsiderate and one day i decided to slam a kid's fingers in the door frame um myself and the kids loved it the people uh, the people my class and my teacher <laughs> my fans uh, my fans are laughing <laughs> I, I, they were legitimately laughing and i was like yeah am i am i good at this Oh, I took quite, took, took quite drag race. Am, am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Am I the drama? I think I'm the drama. I was the drama. Um, yeah. So I found what I was good at. I was good at drama. Yay. I am such a gay person. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the drama. Um, but yeah, like the sport, forget about it. Matt was getting yeah. too hard. English, <laughs> it was more than just spelling. It was like actual putting sentences and analyzing books and stuff. No, no. I was not good at anything apart from drama. That was my thing. Um, So much so that when other people came in, uh, meaning like, right, we had something called Drama Festival, and that would be like, uh, 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 I think it was like year 12 on uh, year 10s. uh, Anyway, senior school people would be in charge of putting productions together. Um, Mm. They would audition people. And of course, as as a new found drama lover, I was going to pursue it. Yep. Um, and of course, I wanted the big roles. I wanted the lead roles because, hey, it's my time to shine. Yay, me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but all the popular kids would get it because they were just more popular. People loved them more. Um, yep. So I was fiercely protective of that. Um, anyway, back to sexuality, the whole point of this podcast. Um, <laughs> um, there was, I couldn't do much. 
there wasn't much I could do. There wasn't anyone out as far as I knew. Well, there was one person, but um, he was a little bit mentally unstable. I don't think he was disabled. I think he was just, um, I wonder if he's still alive. Oh, no, he is. I saw his photos of him recently. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Did I mention I'm a terrible person? Um, I already knew that. Um, but now everyone else knows. <laughs> a, a lot of people who are watching this are people who know me and they know I'm a terrible person. And yeah. who, um, so uh, one year, I think it was year nine, it was year nine where I wanted to try and had no, no, year 10. Yeah, it was year 10. That was my year where I was, I was a rebel. I was, when well, I wasn't a rebel, I was just a prick to everyone. I was, I was just lashing out at everyone. I had fights with my mom every week because I didn't hand in an assignment. My email, my teachers would email my mom and it would be a fight every week. It was horrible. Oh, God. And of course, usually at that time is when hormones really start to yeah. amp up. Yeah. Um, so much so that um, this kid who I think he was saying he was bi at the time um, mm. I saw an opportunity to possibly explore yep. trouble is he is the least subtle person he was the least oh. subtle person in the school ever I tried okay. to talk him into, <laughs> into having a secret relationship with um, <laughs> because I, I just want to have a a boyfriend and just see what it was like yeah. um and he called a quiz like the day after we talked about it um wouldn't even call a quiz he didn't actually fully agree i was just like please and he's like okay um oh. that, that was as far as it was um and i think that started spreading around so nothing happened inside the high school yeah flash forward to 2011 it was my last year in high school because i did i finished year 11 and then did tay for my year 12 equivalent so I didn't graduate in either of my schools. So oh, high school dropout. <laughs> yeah, I'm a dropout. I'm a dropout. I'm I'm horrible. Maybe that's why I'm not so great in life. Anyway, um, anyway, different issue entirely. Um, <laughs> so um fast forward to 2011. I actually no, 2010, because I actually got my first girlfriend. Um oh. and, I, and that sounds super weird and feels almost wrong to say. Um, but we looking back on it it wasn't really a proper relationship it was more just a uh i think she understood that i was going through yeah a bit of a crisis so it i kind nice. of i mean and she was nice she was a nice girl um yeah but i kind of asked like can we start dating mm. um and she was like mm, okay so i mean and, and at that time sorry i'm blowing into my microphone um <laughs> just, just my muscle <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry that's um horrific i'll try and cut that out if i can find it um at the time yeah so at that, at that time i was doing something called stage door which was like a performing arts school mm -hmm. and this would be like an acting slash musical theater but i was in the acting part i was oh, i do not have a dancing or singing bone in my body at all oh mm -mm, no. uh, singing i mean i'm i'm great and amazing at karaoke when I've had enough drinks and and, and, and <laughs> when completely. alcohol's involved and I completely was I'm great yeah. alcohol, I'm gives Mariah Carey. The, alcohol gives me the vocals the of freaking Mariah Car uh, Carey slash Ariana Grande um oh yeah <laughs> that <laughs> no. I have to say no. mm, yeah maybe maybe yeah. maybe uh, uh who knows oh yeah I'm not good at karaoke so <laughs> uh, who is really apart from like actual singers yeah Oh, I've been in a karaoke room when th there's been an actual person with vocal training in there. And I'm like, like you are I'm ruining this. You are yeah. ruining this for, for us. We're supposed to sound last. like crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you have your grand finale, but right now, let me, yeah. have, let me, let me feel my oats, which is very much a drag race uh, uh, joke for those who don't know. Like, oh yes. Stage door. So um, this is performing at school. So anyway, uh, we were doing kind of the cute straight, couple thing in front of people like yeah. i would sit down she would sit down on my lap all the yeah yeah, things, yeah you know the, the things that people do the lovely on the outside. stuff uh, enough yeah yeah nothing to do against like heterosexual people it's 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 the the public affection thing it's just like oof, yeah really some people can't do that mm. um but i was <laughs> i was one of them because I, I convinced myself and everyone around me but i think mainly myself that i was bi because Yep. 
the thought of just being gay was just like, no, I can't yeah. have kids. I can't have a family. I can't do this. I'm going to be seen as a freak. Yeah. At least there's a half chance if I am bi that I can be, you know, normal. Normal. Yeah. What, whatever that means. Um, yeah. You know, stable as a, an actual success in life, which is what I used to yeah. do at the time. Yeah. Anyway, that didn't, um, that, that broke up pretty quick because it wasn't real. <laughs> um, but that the year after, I started, I had my first date with the guy. Um, it, it was a friend of my now ex-girlfriend, um, which yeah. I, these days I don't feel comfortable calling it like a girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. I don't think it was really that. Um, I mean, we've talked since then. Um, mm. but we were just like, we were supposed to kind of a <clears throat> strange time in our lives. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he, we got in contact with each other. Um, he was very keen to have a boyfriend desperately. Um, and look, so was I, so was I, Yeah. um, but I really saw that in him because we had been talking for a while. And the first time we actually met, I remember it was at Murdoch station. He got off the train, um, and he come up and we went to the bus to go. I think it was, we were seeing the movie. What was that movie? Um, it was 2011 or 2010. It was the movie about Shakespeare and like the theory that he didn't actually write his plays. Do you know what I'm talking about? There was a feature film no. that came out during that time. I don't know what it was called, and I barely paid attention <laughs> because we just spent the entire time in that cinema because it was just us. And then there was like an older couple, like way in the front, way in the yeah. front, not anywhere near us. So we were in the back and we were just making out most of the time. Of course. So, yeah. <laughs> but on that bus, <clears throat> he had written love letters yeah <gasps> very serious love letters oh. like together forever kind of thing um oh oh okay so it, it was it was very much a awakening um yeah. not, not like an awakening um but <laughs> very much like a oh is this what i am like i don't i didn't do any of that but i was clearly still just kind of seeing past it not seeing it was a red flag and just going, hey, yeah. a guy's paying attention to me. Yeah. Um, which did actually happen when I did have my first boyfriend because we called it quits. Well, I called it quits with him. It was Fremantle. It was during the summer. It was a really hot day. And then he was so upset. I was following him around for the rest of the afternoon to make sure he wasn't going to do anything stupid. Oh. <laughs> like he got so upset. I was following him to the shops. He was buying something. He left... <laughs> He left the shops and then he went to the, I think it was like an oval next to the school that we were going to. And he like broke down in like the middle of the oval. Oh. And I was just like trying to like comfort him. And I'm like, I'm so sorry this happened. You can, <laughs> you can slap me if you want to. <laughs> Cause I thought I'd be, I, I, you'd make him feel better if he physically yeah. assaulted me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my Lord. Um, <laughs> Don't, those who are listening, don't do that. Please don't no. do that. Do not encourage physical violence. We don't violence. condone that. No, no, don't ever do that because that is abusive. Just, just use don't. your words. <laughs> you communicate, which yeah. for teenagers is very freaking hard, especially teenage boys, because we yeah. can't communicate. Well, I'm not a teenager <laughs> anymore, but I still <laughs> and still have communication issues. Um, hey, at least I'm self aware. Um, yes. So. That was my first ever like experience with a guy. Mm -hmm. um, my first time sexually with a man was, actually I'm skipping it. No, no, I'm not skipping ahead. Yes, I am. But not as much as I thought I was. Um, flash forward to, this is after high school. I finished high school. All that part is over. Mm -hmm. 2014. Yes. That was my first time with a man, oh. sexual, um, 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 intimately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I made a very silly decision that could have ended up very badly. So this is a cautionary tale for those who are listening. Mm -hmm. um, I lost my virginity <laughs> to a guy I had only just met a few hours ago. We've been talking on Facebook a few times. Uh, we were both Lady Gaga fans. So we, we were both on a group and we got to know each other because he was one of the few in Perth, the rest were in the Eastern States. So it really yep. felt incredibly isolating. 
Yeah. Um, and oh my God, I was swooning over this guy. I was, he was very, he was very uh, psychological. He was very, oh. he was very um, enlightened, uh, very well versed in art. Oh my God. And he was just like so intelligent. And I remember, obviously I wasn't drunk enough then, um, <laughs> because um, I remember just listening to his words and how wise he was. And I was like, oh my God, he's so enlightened and he's so smart. And oh my God, I was a 16 year old girl, dude. Like you see TV yep. shows and he's like, oh, he's so smart and everything. Or just real life 16 year old girls. Yeah. Just yeah. wounding over oh, guys. <laughs> yeah. I was I, actually, I think I was still 18. I don't think I was 19 just yet. But yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. Um, I decide because we were at his apartment. So big red flag. I barely know this guy and I'm out of the apartment and, yeah. we're, and we're drinking heavily. Oh, okay. We were drinking entire bottles of, I think it was Southern Comfort. Uh, good stuff, but good lord, we down <laughs> that bottle and we were gone, especially me. Yeah. See, back then, I used to be a lot thinner and I was a lightweight. And yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, I made a very bad decision. Thankfully, it didn't uh, uh, have any repercussions. Um, that part came later. Oh, that's good. Um, oh. Yeah, so that's when we, uh, I, I, I begged him to take away my virginity because I didn't want to be a 19 year old virgin because that was a problem apparently because people were okay. because as a, as a society we are so obsessed with sex that if we're a 19 year old virgin we are seen as like the biggest losers ever and like we yeah haven't gotten anything so I didn't want to succumb to that yeah so we did it although I don't think we finished because his cousin came over <laughs> Oh, oh, Jace. He, apparently, his cousin would. Um, oh, that was distorted. Uh, apparently, um, his cousin would, uh, was would occasionally crash there because he kind of lived there, but like he would stay at other places anyway. Um, so he came back. So he, the guy was just like, get the bucket, and just go shower, just go clean <laughs> off. Um, yeah. But like you know, there was there was the engagement. There was the going past the wall. I'm trying to <laughs> be very clever about this <laughs> again because I don't want to freak people out. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was my first time. Um, oh, by the way, I also slept over because well, I was drunk. So I naturally passed out with him in his bed. Yeah. And I had not le yet learned what the definition of one night stand meant. Oh. <laughs> because I woke up and I was like cuddling him and I was just like very intimate with him. I was like, yeah. So uh, I was just naturally thinking like he's going to be my boyfriend now because I'm just, I was just swooning over him. He, he was my, he was my Edward and I was the Bella in my head, oh, yeah. in my head. Yeah. So I enamored with him, but um, after completely annoying him, um, he was like, look, I'm just like not in the mood to do this right now. Um, and I think he might have misinterpreted what happened. Uh, um, so I was pretty freaking devastated. So I left. Yep. Um, I parked next door in the parking multi-story car park, which costs a fortune in the city. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was my first time. Um, but yeah, that that year was still very difficult for me. I had on on and on things with guys, but. A lot of it was just, well, I say hooking up, but the sex wasn't even involved that much. It was mainly just going out of people's places, making out. I, I, would, I would meet with guys and we would do intimate stuff in the cubicles and toilet cubicles. Oh. I didn't want it because I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to yeah. be like called a, called a, a F slur. I didn't want to be dealing with that because I, I didn't want that kind of negative attention. So, yeah. but I wanted to explore this. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, so over the years, there's been a lot of growing. There's been a lot of having to just say, no, this is me. Mm. I've got to stop hiding it and stop yeah. living in fear. Yeah. So anyway, so my relationships wise, um, sorry, this has gone on for a while. I'm so sorry. Um, um, it's our podcast. It, it is our <laughs> podcast. Yeah. I just don't <laughs> want to take up too much of your time because I know you got to go somewhere. No, um, you fine. But yeah, 2012, um, wait, no, 2015. Jeez, what am I talking about? Uh, 2015 <laughs> was my first official boyfriend. Uh, mm -hmm. The very, very start. 
we got together very quickly. <laughs> I think we had like one or maybe two dates and then we decided, yeah, we're completely in love. We need to be together. Um, Sometimes that happens. Yeah, because he paid attention to me and he wasn't just <laughs> like, hey, it was like, hey, he's not like a one night stand. He wants to see me again. So that must yeah. mean, hey, he wants to be with me. So, yeah. hello, I have a boyfriend now. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> Looking back on it, there was there. Well, we ne- we should have never gotten together. By the way, um, no. I'm glad we did because. Mm. Sorry, I just burped. That was disgusting. Um, um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, and every relationship to- teaches you something. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, but this one was very unhealthy. It was, um, it was emotionally manipulating. Um, yeah. he made me afraid of having um sex wow because i couldn't because i couldn't um pleasure him because oh. i i was I, i'm 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 a bottom mm-hmm. um and i couldn't do it because i felt gross i felt like i wasn't doing it properly i felt like i was letting him down which yeah. is such a red flag for those who are listening do not measure yourself by yeah. if you can uh, physically please someone because sometimes people have issues. It's a very confronting thing to do, especially if you're doing gay, uh, gay sex mm. for the first time because mm. it's not the traditional penis goes into vagina. It's penis yeah. goes into hole and yeah. it freaking hurts. <laughs> Chris, you know, like it, it does hurt the first time. It's, I, I mean, the first time it wasn't so, I mean, I remember it hurting, but I think the alcohol was kind of numbing my senses a little bit. So I think it, I got used to it a lot quicker than I did um, when I did eventually as I but that's, that's skipping ahead a little bit. So, but I always felt like I wasn't pleasing him oh. and I felt like a horrible boyfriend because of that. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, we did spend time together. I remember he took me to like his holiday house, uh, like like up north one time, oh. and yeah. that was kind of trying to have an opportunity to actually finally do it, but we never did. Yeah, and that was one of the like the big breakdowns of our relationship. And we eventually we did break up because I did cheat on him. Oh um, well, when I say cheating. <laughs> Okay, okay. There is different interpretations of it. Yes, yeah. it, was, it was being disloyal because mm. I was making out with a guy. Okay. Um, okay. I went back to his place, this other guy's place. He was going to begin, start doing more than just the making out stuff. But then I stopped and then yeah. I left that place and I called. And this was like late at night, by the way. So my, my ex was <laughs> yeah. asleep at this point. But I was like, I was like in tears. Like, I am so sorry. Like, mm. like, can we please talk about this? Um, we did eventually. Um, we met at the dome in Fremantle and he broke up with me. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, I cheated on him. So, you know, that was natural. But then I noticed something while we broke because I, I, I publicly cried and I never do that. <laughs> yeah. Ever. I never cry in public. It yeah. very rarely happens. It's only having like, in, like I can count the amount of times it's happened in my, on my in one hand. Yeah, and I've, and I've got all five fingers attached. So if anyone's like, "Oh, does he have like three fingers?" No, no, no. I've got five. I've got five. Yes. <laughs> He's got one finger. <laughs> you count on that one finger. Yeah. No, no, no. I've got five fingers. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no. Um, uh, yeah, because of my insecurity. But then he fake cried. Now I knew oh. he fake cried because I'd seen him legitimately cry before. It was for like a marriage equality thing, and it was legitimately sweet. So I'd yeah, seen yeah, him yeah. actually cry, yeah, before. But I knew this was a uh, fake cry. But at mm-hmm. the time, I was like, "Look, I could call him out of it, but I just cheated on him, so I have no room to say anything." Yeah. Looking back on it, I should have called it out, <laughs> especially because mm. I found out years later that he was actually cheating on me long before I cheated on him. Serious? Uh-huh. Oh my god! Because I, I, I had a date with a guy who told me about him and said, "Hey, oh. we actually end up having." It was like February 2016. At that time, he and I were still together. So oh I was god. like, "Oh." So he made me feel bad about cheating. Uh, yeah, even though, and even, even though I wow. didn't, I didn't even have sex with that other guy, but he did. Yeah. 
and made yeah. me feel like the the bad guy. Yeah. Wow. I don't speak to that guy anymore. No. I don't, no. I don't, I don't, I don't speak <laughs> to my first ex anymore. My first ex, oh, I don't know. He's in Canberra or something. We're still in law. Um, yeah. Oh, God. I, I, know, I know this is... At least I he know. can lie. <laughs> That's the thing. They're, 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 it's like they're trying to lie. <laughs> yeah. And I need to, I need, I need to make a slight um, uh, disclaimer here. I know not all lawyers are, are emotionally manipulating. Yes. I know that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've just had bad experiences with lawyers. One was my ex-boyfriend and one who I went on a couple of dates with who I thought was like the perfect guy. <laughs> <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello, I like you long time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anywho, um, but yes. Um, so, so throughout the years, I've, I've had time to grow up and accept that I... Oh, also, also, by the way, do you want to know when I officially came out as gay and I dropped the whole bi thing? When? After I broke up with my first boyfriend. Really? <laughs> yeah, how, well. How, how random is that of a time? It's like, I'm so yeah. sad and depressed on my, my ex. And I went home crying, by the way. I came home and I, break, I broke down yeah. on that day. It was, <laughs> it was so funny. It was like, I'm, I'm so sad and stuff, but I definitely don't want girls or, or boobs or anything, <laughs> but I'm definitely gay, but yay i've learned something about myself but i'm so <laughs> devastated <laughs> yeah but at least that way you knew like i, I guess am that's awful how you knew. but i'm definitely not by anymore i know that now for some reason at this time <laughs> yeah it, take, it takes heartbreak to know that you're officially gay and definitely not interested in females at all um <laughs> oh good um so for the longest time i didn't i didn't have any i mean i had stuff like that but i didn't have because yeah. i felt ugly I felt like oh. I couldn't perform properly because oh. that lingered in my head. Yeah. So I don't know if abusive is too much of a heavy handed word to use for that, but it lingered with me, how he yeah. made me feel. Yeah. And of that's another thing that for you who are listening need to understand that you can't let others dictate your self-worth. Yeah. And I know that's way easier said than done, especially for those who are in a, yes. <laughs> definitely in a lot more, uh toxic relationships mm. but it is the truth and mm. sometimes see i'm just reflecting on it now just talking about it and it feels really good to yeah. talk about it and mm. that's why we started the show that's what we're doing exactly. this is this can be as a therapy safe to, to people it's a safe yeah. it is a safe space yeah it's completely a safe space yeah um even if you, even if you choose to be anonymous even if you choose <laughs> to go hey i just want like a code name i want my voice to be muffled or you just write to us and we read through it our awesome. email. Yeah. Our, okay, yeah. Our email is queer stories on the swan at hotmail.com. If you want to email us and we can, we can discuss, um, not, I mean, we can read out your story and discuss aspects of that. So, yeah, but we want this to be a safe space for everyone who wants to join us. Yeah. So anyway, so just, 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 just to wrap it up quickly, cause you've got to go on your thing um, <laughs> that, um, yeah. So I've had to face a lot growing up but i am proud to be a gay man um Good. and i want to give back to the community with this podcast give you all yes. a voice to tell your stories because yeah. that that means something to us because yeah. again I, I i did grow up very very <clears throat> lucky my parents didn't keep me out because Ooh. i was gay which <laughs> just quickly my my mom ruined my ruined my coming out by the way oh. when, I was, when i thought i was bi because mums um, always know though <laughs> they, they just know they I just know, know. <laughs> They just know um, because I had a speech written. I had um, yes. a, a suitcase ready just yep. in case things turned all prepared. Shape. And, I was yep. all prepared. I was ready for the dramatics because I, I, I know because I'd seen <laughs> videos on YouTube of like really yeah. bad coming outs. Like they yep. would come out and there would be like a full on physical altercation. Yeah, and it was it was terrifying. That made me go, "Oh my god, what if this happens?" Like there was no mention of any gay or, or queer things in general but you just yeah. don't know until that comes up. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was like, mom, I got something to tell you. I started going to just like, yeah, I know. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Like, are you serious? <laughs> this are is my serious? moment. <laughs> I had all this. This was my moment to shine. If this yeah. camera's around, this would have been Oscar worthy. And you yeah. ruined that. <laughs> you not. and your, and your, and your acceptance and your love. Yeah, God, <laughs> with me here. Yeah, <laughs> um, my dad was. Yeah, my dad was accepted. Um, yeah. My brother did find out, but it was while I was dating my second boyfriend. Um, so I've had it pretty easy. Um, yeah, 
but so yeah so because i've been quite privileged that's why i wanted to start this podcast so people can talk to us about their stories yeah so yeah um and you know i think that's as far as i'm gonna go i think i think we got the (laughs) basic general gist um i'm a basic white boy and i've i've gone through trials and tribulations um but i'm stronger now because of it so yeah that's chris done christo you want to begin your turn now oh god well mine's not as dramatic as yours because i'm i don't know my life was just the <laughs> chris you're gay anyway. to be dramatic are you a gay or not <laughs> oh yes just anyway <laughs> anyway go anyway on, so as you said picture this <laughs> no <laughs> well i was born in gosford new south wales mm-hmm. um Ooh, in 1990 an easterner yes um and then I well, my birth mother moved here into Perth when I was sort of probably about two. Mm-hmm. And then I was taken off her through um, child services and given to a family that I've been with since then. It was only mm-hmm. supposed to be temporary, but you know, something years later, I'm still with them. Um, <laughs> so they're basically my adopted family now, um, right. and living with them has been really great, obviously. Um, but why am I so nervous? This is so weird. Uh, hey, remember this is a safe talking about myself. And, and hey, look, if, if, <laughs> look, and that's the thing. Um, this I'm saying this to you, Christo, but I'm also saying this to any potential guests mm. that we have in the future. Um, if there's mm. anything that you want off the record, you don't want to discuss, that is completely up to you. Like we yeah, are a safe space, know. and you can like we're not going to expose or or, or use yeah your stories for any. Um, mischievous or, or, or gain or anything thing. yeah 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 no no gain or anything this is not a game yeah. this is purely a community Clickbait. based yeah. po- no none of that um yeah so you don't have to go anything chris if you don't want to yeah, yeah, yeah. Christo. <laughs> i'm just so i'm always <laughs> christo i'm sorry i am so bad at that chris christo okay. i'm sure they'll distinguish our voices <laughs> i'm sure they will too <laughs> It's like match your voice numbers and try and confuse people. <laughs> oh God! Good luck. <laughs> I will. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I'm um, so sorry. I've interrupted you again. Go ahead. It's okay. So, um, I guess growing up, I was normal. Like I played. With, I guess I should have known when I was younger. My mum obviously knew because mm. I'd play with Barbie dolls with my sisters because I had sisters. So that's that's 100% that. straight. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, it was fun. <laughs> like I had cars and everything. I've still got like a manly side, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was always with the girls. My All my friends are girls. I've never really had guy friends. I don't know yeah. why. Yeah. No, I had that too. Um, you know, I, I, just never... get along, I just get along with girls and women. Yeah, than, I relate to men. them so much easier. Yeah. And they're less problematic anyway, sometimes. But... <laughs> I was going to say that's a bit subjective, apparently, but um, I wouldn't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so like growing up, it was just a normal childhood. There was nothing really to think about or anything. I never really thought about sexuality for a long time. Like I just never, it never clicked at all um, until I got into... I was 16 so I was in year 10 because I was 18 when I graduated um and my best friend at the time she and I we'd been friends since like year eight and we decided to date each other like as you do Mm -hmm. um and so her and I dated for like a year and the first six months we were just together the whole school school knew um that was kind of like the talk of the town which was so weird Mm. even though we weren't popular or anything it was just so weird and this Um, is still back where you originally lived yeah in the eastern states is that correct no this is here oh this is here sorry yes sorry correct you said i've been in perth since i was three you said you said talk of the town so i just for some reason just automatically went town sorry sorry (laughs) no like the school talk of the school school town yeah sure yeah um and so for the first six months we'd actually never kissed we'd only hugged and held hands and that was it oh okay. and every that, time that, that was like story, third base back in like when you were like a kid yeah yeah, yeah like yeah, oh my god yeah. you held a hand <gasps> oh, oh my god oh my god you've exchanged you know, we, <laughs> yeah. oh my god <laughs> you have girl james now do you understand what that means <laughs> ew ew well, that, that explains the girly side of me <laughs> yeah you know what maybe girl james are real and they just turn people gay 
I know. Damn. Oh my god, we just discovered it. We discovered the gay, the gayness. Yep. <laughs> How gays created. Tell, tell all the scientists in the world. Yep. Just if purge, 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 all, purge all the girls, gay. and then the gays will go. But they can't <laughs> yeah. do that because then they'll be like, "Oh, society will collapse." Guess you can't oh, well. get rid of us. It's like <laughs> yeah. we're a foundation. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go ahead, Del. <laughs> oh my god. So anyway, so yeah, so once six months here she wanted to kiss me and I just never thought about it. Mm. Every time we tell this story to people, we both crack up laughing. At yeah. the time, it was very weird and awkward. She took me behind the building at the school at lunchtime. Oh, scandalous. And yeah, I know. And she was leaning up against the door and I was standing in front of her and she pulled me in and we kissed. And then she let go and I fell straight into a bush <laughs> behind me. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can you picture it? Um, yeah, was it was it like you just kind of fainted, like whoa, that was I, amazing, and then I, you fell into the I bush? I think it was just. Or a was shock, it kind but... of like was it like your gay body just kind of like just impacted off a shield, and then you just Probably. landed back into the bush? So I've been Probably. watching a lot of I've been watching a lot of Marvel stuff recently, so oh. superhero stuff is in my head. <laughs> oh yes. No, I think it was just the sheer shock. Oh, oh my god someone kissed me like <laughs> it wasn't my parents it wasn't my mom kissing me on the cheek or anything or my or my grandparents yeah. it was a yeah. person not related to me what yeah, yeah. no oh i get god. that um and then things went on okay after that we didn't kiss yep. again <laughs> why oh. would i wow. <laughs> i was a bit shocked i'm like oh, excuse me um and then our relationship went downhill and we got mm -hmm. a bit angry at each other <laughs> right up until um end of school where we had our I think our biggest fight that we've ever had in our entire life wow was over a candy cane <laughs> okay because you know I, you I know, need to school... know the context I need to know the context <laughs> of this story because my you know, dirty mind immediately was like <laughs> I want this there for myself like no I want this for myself in case you were finding yourself out but that's no completely no, 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 no. dirty and horrific <laughs> please go on <laughs> oh my god so you know at the end of the year <laughs> yeah okay naughty at the end of the year you know how you bought like christmas cards for everyone and mm -hmm. they had candy canes and stuff uh, yeah well that. anyway she yeah. she did that right but she didn't give me a candy cane she gave me a card <gasps> but i didn't get a candy cane and wow. i was furious i'm like excuse me i'm your boyfriend <laughs> like i should have the biggest one anyway <laughs> so we had like, something argument. anyway sorry that was rude <laughs> <laughs> oh my god PG, Chris. <laughs> I know. I, I was just the one saying, I want to keep the podcast clean. And uh -huh. yet here I go. It's okay. Well, I'm, I'm editing yeah. it. I'm editing this yeah. episode. So it's me who has to pay for those mistakes. So <laughs> you're fine. Um, anyway, so like, because she'd given it to everyone in the morning. So I was mm -hmm. angry with her the entire time. Right. Um, we sat at like opposite ends of the common room and everything. And um. Everyone knew. Everyone knew that there was something wrong. <laughs> was it was it like a team, language. team Chris and then team um whatever her name was? No. Jazz. Oh, okay. No. Team um, Jazz. Yeah. It was just just everyone knew wow. we were not happy because we weren't sitting together and we weren't together. Mm. Um and anyway, so about lunchtime, she actually comes to me and gives me, I honestly can't remember what she gave me, but it was so much better than a candy cane. Um, like a physical present of something. Okay, right. And yeah. it was all fine after that. Yeah. She's like, I just wanted to give you something special, but at like a later date. So it didn't seem like I was just trying to, you know, mm. give everything out. Mm. I was like, well, oh, that's actually really nice. I'm so sorry. Mm. <laughs> so, Do we believe it? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was it was lovely. It was really nice. Anyway. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, uh, I think it was Boxing Day or the day after. Uh, do you remember I what year this was? Just, just, to, just, just to keep up? It was 2006. Right. Yeah, end of 2006. Mm. So I was 16. Um, anyway, so at the end of the, at that day, about Boxing Day, I texted her going, we need to talk. Mm. And she calls me and goes, we need to break up. I'm like, that's exactly what I was going to say to you. You're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we both kind of met that day as well. Like I went back to her, like, to her place because she lived in the same area as me. And we just sat and talked and, you know, discussed everything. And I go, I think I'm bi. She goes, really? I'm like, yeah, well, you know, school locker rooms and um, boys kind of 
have interest me you know when the boys get changed and they're topless and it's like wow she's like yeah, yeah get it. <laughs> that was a, that, that was the thing i tried not that, to look at for too long in high school because um, i didn't like yeah i didn't try to look but it just you see it it was like, just oh, there and oh that's freaking, nice that's, freaking that's running pretty. all over the room you can't not see it yeah it's like, it's like you're not making this easy for us that are actually gay yeah and like i'm have, trying so hard to hide in the corner and not let anyone see me get changed just, yeah and just, just a quick like, Woo! just a quick side note how funny well funny for us now but at the time it was frustrating <laughs> like the amount of times especially like the sporty straight man will mm. do like gay stuff like they'll yeah. hug and they're like i remember like you know these big big buff guys yeah. will like take up like the more sporty scrawnier kids like they were much shorter and they're like hold them in their arms and all like all, all, all cutesy stuff but it was obviously just a joke yeah and then you have the gay kid watching them for me um and then they'd be like what <laughs> are you like, looking oh, at they're not, they're not gay. do you want to join in and i was just like, and, and and back yeah. way back in my mind i'm like um maybe yeah. but me, so i'm like no 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 and it's like yeah. really it's a little bit i just found it a little bit like really i'm really struggling with this but i can't tell anyone yeah and you're openly flaunting just do it yeah it's, it's almost like mocking it but yeah mm. it, it's frustrating isn't it anyway look uh lucky lock, locker room boys sorry that tends to yep. people like me um <laughs> <laughs> i know right yeah. um so you came out as bi so yeah 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 so i came out as bi to her no one else no one else knew anything right. although i'm sure my friends knew. anyway and i think it was about a month into 2017 mm. i came out and I realized, no, I'm gay. I do not look at women that way. I don't think women are, for me personally, sexually attractive. Yep. Like I can admire and say that they're beautiful and stunning and sexy. Yeah. But not in the way that a straight guy thinks. Yeah. When I'm you, not when lusting you... after them. It's more of like, oh, you look very sexy, sweetie. Like yeah. it's a compliment when rather you... than a come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you came out as, sorry, uh, when you came out as bi to, um, to jazz, um, mm. was that to kind of go like was it kind of like me where I said hey if I'm bi there's a chance like I'm not completely gay is is that why you did it or was it kind of like I know I've just been dating you but if I say I'm gay that's kind of dishonest is that why or I think it was just I was just trying to figure out like yeah who I liked like yeah which gender do I actually like and who yeah. am I sexually attracted to? And yeah, and that can happen. All of that. So, so yeah. yeah. So for me, that's kind of what it was about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so then, you came out as gay in 2017. Yeah. Yep. So I came out to her. Mm-hmm. She was always the first one to know everything. Yeah. She's like a sister to me. We, are, we've been inseparable for the last, well, since 2000 and well, since what, year eight. And oh, that's still, that's still the case now. 14. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's that about awesome. 16 years or something, something stupid like that. Yeah, like a long perfect. time. Gotten to the point where we just kind of criticize each other. It's great. Yeah. That's um, a joke. What, that's what friends are for. Yeah, exactly. She's my, I won't say the word, beep. <laughs> Bish. Um, petri dish. <laughs> yeah. No, not petri dish. So, yeah. Anyway. So I came out. <laughs> So I came out to her and then everything was cool. Obviously mm-hmm. she didn't care and she's pansexual anyway. Yep. Now. Um, then I came out to my other closest friends and their reaction was, yeah, we know. <laughs> I'm like. What is with people on ruining coming out? It's supposed to be our moment. Why not give me a chance to be emotional <sighs> and sorry and just, uh, but they're like, yeah, okay, cool. I'm like, oh, fine. Mm. So I'm like, okay, I need to tell my mom, you know, but mm-hmm. I didn't tell my mum until I almost finished year 12. Mm-hmm. So That's I waited a long time to tell her, I guess, because I was still trying to figure out myself. Yeah. Trying to figure out who I am, what I'm into, all that kind of stuff. And just, yeah, I didn't discover boys. I wasn't with anyone. Like I never had those opportunities because there wasn't much of the internet back then. Yeah. <laughs> like I was, you know, it was like, 2008 so the Mm. internet wasn't that big there wasn't that many hookup apps as there are now Mm. there wasn't even I think the only one I was on which is actually how I met my partner um was um manhunt if you've ever heard of that one no I hadn't it was a website but now it's an app but (laughs) 
Right, okay. I was on that when I turned 18. I mm -hmm. signed myself up and I was still at school and I was like, you know, why not? Let's see what's out there. Anyway, so I finally told my mum and she was like, okay, do you want me to tell your dad? Because my dad was flying fly out. I'm like, okay, everything was fine. Nothing was wrong. Yep. <laughs> They've never, ever treated me any different. Um, my mum actually, I think, loves to have a gay son. <laughs> I know. I feel it always sounds like, loves like it. a parent kind of almost wishes they were, especially the mums. Because mm. then mm. it's like, mm. ooh, now we can kind of be talking about men and it's kind of cool. Yeah, especially like once, especially once your kid thing. grows up. Like if it's a teenager, yeah. it's still a bit like a little weird. But like yeah. now my mum will sometimes like sync with men with me. And it's just like, <laughs> especially the pit crew from Drag Race, like, oh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> men. <laughs> Did I mention yes, that I'm gay them. and I'm oh gay my God, and yes. I love men? You're gay? Ew. <laughs> I know, I know. Ew. What is this, a gay Ew. podcast or something? What? <laughs> I came to the wrong room. <laughs> yes, you did. In your in your lovely background of your tropical background, you green screen extra B word. <laughs> yeah, well, someone's got to be. One of us has to be extra. <laughs> Girl, do not start with me. Don't you start I'll bring with me. it. I was just smiling at how sweet your life was. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that's pretty much my growing up. I never, nothing really changed after yeah. that. Yeah. What about your um, relationship with your partner? Like, what was, was that pretty, has that been pretty easy or have you had like, like difficulties? No. <laughs> no, no, really? Good. Uh, no. uh, so, uh, also, it's not been easy. Sorry. Sorry. What? Hang, hang on. I think I asked like a million questions. Oh. So it's has your like things with the partner have been like been okay? Has, has there been like rocky times where you know was he trying to figure oh. himself out while he was with you or no, anything like no. that? No, um, more on my side, but not me. So basically, when we started dating, it was beginning of two thousand and nine. Mm -hmm. My mum didn't know, or my parents didn't know. I kept it a very big secret for a year. Mm. That's, that's, and, a, that's a pretty decent amount of time for something like that. Well, I wanted to make sure. I'm one of those people that has to get to know someone by myself personally oh, before yeah, I let anyone else know. Because if it doesn't work out, they'll never know. Exactly. You know what I mean? Was he just it's a like, friend yeah, at the time? Where there's like, oh, I'm just going to see my friend uh, Steve. No, or, no, okay. no, Jazz was my, uh, God, I hope she doesn't listen. She probably will. Um, you Jasmine advertise it on your my, page. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine was my alibi for everything. <laughs> <laughs> look i don't think she's gonna be too mad about that i mean I don't, oh I don't she know. knows I, she she's always said she'll be my alibi oh well there you go what's what she gonna so, be upset about <laughs> it, it was lovely so i'd say i'm catching but we did catch up like she'd come with us like we'd go to do things and she'd be there so it wasn't yeah, like good. i wasn't lying she was there but she was the third wheel but she understood yeah but that's also like um, kind of like when you're trying to figure someone out like you need a second opinion because that's what yeah. I did. That, and I wish I did have that when I was pursuing that my first boyfriend. Yeah. Because I, people would have immediately been like, yeah, mm, he's a bit mm. uh, not something. fully committed. Yeah, there's, there's something yeah. that he's not being honest with you. So I think yeah. it's important if you go on a date with a, several dates with a guy, you're trying to get to know him, especially after a long period of time. Mm. Because the first few months of a relationship are just bliss right yeah but then as you go through you might start fighting about things you might have some differences about you that you yeah. can't really experience until you start experiencing it and then that might turn things rocky yeah but with a second person because they're not looking in with like googly eyes what well, you'd hope so because yeah, yeah, otherwise yeah. there might be fights <laughs> but then you can have yeah. that kind of outside opinion do you know mm. what i mean so and also I think, you, I think that's great. you feel you feel comfortable with that second person because yeah you are who you are with them. Yeah. So and they're going to be honest with you. Who they're going to be. They're going to tell you. They're not going to try and manipulate yeah. you. Any, well, you'd hope. Yeah. But yeah. For me, the main reason was because there was an age gap. So there's right. a 13 year age, 13, 14 year age gap between me and my partner. Right. So he's older. So he was 42 when we met and I was 18, 19. <laughs> okay. not saying that that's a bad thing age gaps mean nothing oh me. no i don't care how old you are especially once you get older you know because because yeah. remember at, in high school it's it's scandalous if you are dating someone yeah. that's like one or two years older than you oh yeah oh my god yeah like what are you thinking you you crazy yeah. person but now you come yeah. out you're like ah oh, 
I'm I'm twenty four. I'm twenty four, and he's like thirty eight. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Anyway, so that kind of kept me a bit like, oh, this is going to be hard to tell my mum because mm. she's very, very protective. Mm. And um, so she, I finally told her. The next day she told me to invite him over. So I did. This was after a year of dating him. Mm-hmm. So I'd already got to know him. We were in love. It was really, really great. Everything like that. Um, him coming over went really well. She said she liked him. I was like, oh my God, this is great. Like, I'm so happy. Yes, I'm young, but I found someone I'm really happy with. You know, yes, it's my first relationship as, with a guy, but, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes these things happen. Mm-hmm. Fairy tale moments do actually happen. Um, You'll have to explain and... what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll trust me. It's okay. <laughs> it gets worse. Um, so anyway, so he leaves, mum says, that's all good. Like, la, 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 he's really lovely. I'm like, okay, cool. Left it at that. Um, and then I started working and I get home. This is probably months, months after she's met him. I get home and I get a text message from Jazz saying, um, I'm not going to say his name. Um, my partner is upset and you need to contact him oh my god this was, like, oh this god, was her partner no this is my, my oh, this, this is your partner okay yeah yep yeah so jazz obviously is in contact with my partner as well mm-hmm. um and i'm like oh god what's happened like <laughs> everything seemed to be fine so i contact him and he goes your mother showed up at my work and told me that our relationship has to end that oh. I'm a pedophile oh my God. and I'm leading you on and I'm grooming you and all this kind of stuff. And he's bawling his eyes out on the phone to me. And I'm like, but like a month ago, mum was fine. Like everything was fine. Mm. <laughs> um, and then mum came home and I confronted her about it because I was like, you know what? This is my relationship, not yours. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, yeah. He was, he was rude to me. He was nasty to me. Rah, 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 rah. And I know him and I know her yeah so you know she was trying to say that he you know i don't know him and he's rough and i'm like he's like the sweetest guy in the world like come on Mm. like he'd do anything and at the time he mum had taken my sister's at the time boyfriend with her and apparently he was all like yeah yeah you know agreeing with my mum saying Mm. that you know this was happening and um my partner got a a um golf club out of the car and threatening her and, I, and i'm like jeez that does not sound like him at all trust That's, me i know no. <laughs> um so anyway when i finally got like i told him okay whatever you know whatever mm. so i think it was like a couple of days later i actually went and saw him he sat down and talked to me about it and said look i actually got a message from your mum saying that she's coming to see me so i thought to distract everyone at the office like at the business that he worked at He'd go take his golf club and put it in the car as if that's what he was doing. But in fairness, he was just going to wait by the car for mm-hmm. her to arrive. So when she arrived, he was putting the golf club in the car. And that's why she confused the golf club. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes more sense than you lashing out at her, like as if you do that. Anyway, so we had to end it. I dated two other guys after him around my age. And found it was just not my thing. Yeah. I just couldn't deal with the, well, one of them we dated for about a year. The other one we dated probably two years, which we're still friends. I'm friends with all my exes. Mm. Go me. Um, I'm friends with one of them. So I, I've, I've got, no, one of my exes, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I know your exes too. <laughs> oh my God. The amount of stories we talk about. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. no. Um, the things yeah. they could tell. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we were, you know, like I dated guys my age and, it was good but it wasn't the same what I'd had you know I missed that kind of maturity like I enjoyed going out because I was trying to get used to going out to nightclubs and whatever and as you do at that age but it just got to the point where I was like this isn't me like I'm not Mm. I need that more mature person in my life than just constant party 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 I was exhausting I I just couldn't do it 
yeah. even now, God, nine o'clock's my bedtime. I'm done. I'm <laughs> so old. <laughs> I know. Even I know. after nine, I'm like, <laughs> I know, I know. We were meant to record this yesterday. Uh, well, at a previous day, and um, yeah, it was a bit too late. To be fair, yeah, I was like, that was, that was my I bad. Was curled up on the couch, yeah. <laughs> like I'm not moving, bitch. That's all good. But <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing it now, so that's all good. <laughs> yes. Um. Anyway, so, so then I broke off with my last boyfriend. Um, I think we broke off. All right, we're friends. So I was there. We did. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I asked jazz because she still had my partner's number Mm -hmm. i said can you contact him we got back in contact um and then we started dating and then for a year again behind my mom's back (laughs) because i'm like i don't want this to happen again Mm -hmm. um and then i um made it official on jazz's birthday i -hmm. asked him out and we made it official then i told mum. Mum got upset because I hadn't told her and I'm like well I wanted to make sure that this is what I wanted I didn't want to be like yeah we're back together two months later Mm -hmm. like I wanted to make sure definitely that this is going to progress it's going to stay how it is and it did she was all right then trying to think when did I move out I think I was like 22 and I moved out with him Mm -hmm. Um, which was fine. Mum was happily, because we'd be dating for a while then. So she knew and met and everything. Um, and then she still had her doubts because protective mum, mm-hmm. as they do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't until our first cruise together that she offered to take us because it was leaving Fremantle. Mm-hmm. And in the drive there, he sat in front because I made him. <laughs> and she apologized and said, look, I'm sorry, you know, you've been living with my son for so many years. Um, He's fine. He's safe. I trust you. Can we leave it all in the past? And everything's great. He comes to Christmas now. It's just like, it's been, we obviously live together. We own a house together and stuff, but. It's a lovely house. I've been there. It's (laughs) lovely. (laughs) Thank you. Um, But yeah, like it's had its struggles, but I guess I think if people want to take something away from that, it's the struggles teach you a lot. Mm -hmm. And if you love someone, you will fight for it. Oh, this is so cute. I know (laughs) it it, it is. It's very like romantic Blair, but (laughs) it's true. Like Uh, I not that kind, like you make it not Blair. So that's, that's like the best kind. (laughs) But like, I could have just not contacted him again. Yeah. Who knows where my life would have been. But the fact that he was still in the back of my mind meant that he was the one. He's the Mm -hmm. one I wanted. Mm. Um, And, you know, we tease each other about it, each other's ages, you know, because he can say stuff and I'm like, oh, because you're old. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you're from the Stone Age. (laughs) Like, And he'll be like, oh, you're too young to understand this. I'm like, yeah, well, good. Well, you're you're from the ancient hieroglyphic days that we discussed earlier. So, yeah. So you can't speak at all. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, for you. But... (laughs) See, we'll have those moments. Yeah. Um, yeah. So because you're the aunt and I'm the mum. <laughs> I know. But like, yeah, I just think people, you know, it's it's kind of when you're young and you're trying to discover yourself and trying to discover love and everything, it is so complicated. Oh, so love. complicated. That word love is just like, oh geez. It is so um, complicated. <laughs> yeah. But also, like, you know, you always think you found the one mm-hmm. every time. Yep. As you said, you know, it's you think you found the one that's going to happen and, and it doesn't, but you know, it, it may take a year. It may take five, 10 years before you find someone. Yeah. And you'll still have fun in between. Cause that's what you do. Yeah. You know, we're all human, but are we? like, yeah, no, we are pretty sure. Well, the gays are aliens, but sh- um, <laughs> with hey, race. <laughs> I need to cut that out now. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, yeah, like just, love like it will happen when it happens it's not you gotta let it organically happen it's not gonna be yeah if you force it it's not gonna work no not at all that's what i've learned (laughs) you know love wins love is love yeah all the other cliche love things that you hear over the years good or bad yeah (laughs) yeah and i guess you know we're an odd couple because like we don't fight Mm. like at all we've never had a blow up like we have little disagreements but we always talk about it we're not like yelling at each other like 
lot of straight people. Mm. Um, and I don't know if that's weird, <laughs> but I, mean, I feel like we're on the same page with everything. So nothing is like a I mean, drama or yeah. a bad thing. I mean, I haven't any like yellings at any of my relationships. Like, yeah, it's about like disagreements and, you know, we might fight about things, but we won't be like screaming and, and, and doing that stuff. But I don't know. Some people are just unnaturally able to not have that. Long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, even if they, they can still be in love and have like very like, like people who are like very passionate, if they get together. Yeah. People who are passionate, yeah. they yell. Boom, 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 boom. And, yeah. <laughs> and oh my God, it can be seen as such as an aggressive thing, but sometimes it's mistaken as a passion thing. But it, then it's, but then you also don't want to just hide. Work. You don't want to, you don't want to hide that as, oh, I'm just passionate. No, sometimes yeah. if, you're, if you're being a prick, you're being a prick. You have to yeah. admit that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, some, that just sounds like you two just, just, you just, you just don't. And that's yeah. just sometimes how, how, that's how simple it is. You just don't. It makes it so much easier to live yeah. with people. <laughs> oh. I bet. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like I said, my life hasn't been difficult in that way. Yeah. Well, in I mean, gay I, just, and I, just, I, just, way. I just made it super dramatic it's, because that's just who I am. No, no, no. <laughs> we all, like, that's the whole point of this podcast is we all have stories and they're all different. Exactly. Like, like, you different could ways have, of how we got to where we are. And you could have had the most um, difficult upbringing being queer um you could have yeah a super privileged one in yeah. between uh, uh uh mostly good but then you have a couple of difficulties every relationship is different doesn't matter whether queer or not yeah but yeah you know because there's obviously a queer podcast that's coming out the as queer like as anything that's not straight can be seen as an obstacle at times yes oh, whether it's by your immediate is an obstacle uh, oh, coming out, oh, i would <laughs> to admit, never the first I would obstacle, never repeat that again <laughs> the first obstacle is trying to admit it to yourself yeah for you to stand in i one of the things i've watched and learned is the first thing to do is stand in a mirror and tell yourself mm -hmm. who you are yep. before telling anyone else yeah <laughs> and some because, people really struggle with doing yeah. that if you can't if you can't tell yourself who you are there's no way you can tell anyone else yeah because you're the one that has to look after yourself exactly. not everyone else <laughs> so. i know i i know i constantly quote drag race but you know it, the whole saying is if you can't love yourself how the hell can you love everyone else can i get an amen amen it, it's true it's, yeah, but it's you know, true it, it is true like it is true yeah yeah i don't think anyone can love anyone else without loving yourself Mm -hmm. Like we all have things we hate about each other. I mean, ourselves. Oh. Both, both, both are correct. So <laughs> yeah, each other both and are, ourselves. Both, yeah. both are correct. <laughs> um, and there's definitely a lot of things to, I, I've definitely got a lot of insecurities that I have and a lot of things that I uh, will self bash. Like I don't, I don't, I don't mean self harm. I mean, like just constantly, mm. I will be my one worst critic. Yeah. But I am yeah. better than I used to be. And I'm getting better at that. The yeah. more I grow, the more I learn, the more I respect myself, you know? Yeah. 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 And in my 31 years of wisdom and life. Hey, I, hey you're raging yourself, not I, me. I don't care. I'm <laughs> proud of my age. There you go. Um, I don't look it, so it's great. Um, like, I find that, um, oh, geez, there goes my microphone. Um, like, I find that the more you... Um, respect yourself and the more you I guess start to accept things about you the more confident you are in who you are I still have insecurities obviously um, <laughs> there are everyone things does for people who Ugh. say you know there can be people who say but... like they have no insecurities first oh, no, of all please. what are you on yeah give Second it to me all, <laughs> please if there's some sort of elixir or, or I have to sell my soul or something I, I don't care Give it to me. I would do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But everyone's got something that they're not particularly happy about. We can work on ourselves to improve it. Yeah. Um, and we have to we have to all accept that we're flawed human beings. Human beings yes. are flawed. We are such a flawed group of divas. Um, and we're so judgmental oh on ourselves. God. Because I, I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to try and act all sciencey. <laughs> But like, neither am I. <laughs> as as people, the human race is genetically engineered to always be 
the alpha, whether that means the alpha Ooh. male, or we're always going to try and to try to want to control our lives. And yeah. a lot of that can be with some people controlling people around them, therefore yeah. their own lives. Yeah. So, and when we see negative things or things we don't like, that's the part we're going to focus on. And yeah. remembering the positives can be hard Ooh. because it's like, well, the positives are solved. So yeah. we don't need to look at the positives. We just need to solve the negatives. Yeah. But if you forget about the positives, then it's just the negatives are just consuming your mind mm. and, you, and you're not happy. Yeah. Believe, totally believe me, believe me. The amount yeah. of times I've had to tell myself this is a yeah. lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> have we covered anything, yes. Chris? Chris Two, Fur? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I I think yeah. I think I'm pretty happy with what we've done. How long has this meeting gone? Where is there a timer? Um, One hour forty is my. An hour forty. Jesus, I've got a lot to but edit. But that's okay. <laughs> but that's like starting oh, yeah. from when we did all the dilly dallying around. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I started recording beforehand, so I don't think it'll be as long. Anywho, yeah. so this, I, how are we going to do I, an I, outro? <laughs> are, are you happy with that, Chris Dome? What? Yeah. What? Are, are you happy with what we've done? Like, do you have anything yes. more to add? Or? Yes. Well, no. I think I think this is our first episode, our pilot. Oh my god! Oh my god! So, thank you so much for everyone who weight off shoulders. <laughs> oh, right. Until the next one. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, well, at least we, the next one will probably have someone, so we can bounce off we'll, someone else. Exactly. Exactly. It's not going to be about us. Um, so oh. Oh, we can add, we can add little things here and there, but like it's gonna be mainly about the guest. So thank you <laughs> all. We must absolutely. Anyway, thank you all for listening. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule. If you're listening in your car, um, uh, uh, on your laptop, um, in the bar, in space, in, in space, Wherever. in space. <laughs> if, there are, if aliens can listen to our podcast, um, well, I was thinking about spacemen, but yeah, okay. Uh, uh, space men and women. Fair, fair. <laughs> wherever you're listening to, <laughs> thank you so much for listening yes, we really you. appreciate the support and the time to mm -hmm. um to listen to us just chat about our lives um yes. if you want to reach out to us to be on yes. the show um i think i would recommend going through our email uh which is queer stories on the swan at hotmail.com hotmail <laughs> yes which, chris remember that <laughs> Well, I know because my first email address was a hotmail address. So that, that's very like nostalgic for me. Um, otherwise, you can still reach us through our Facebooks, uh, uh, sorry, our, our mm -hmm. socials, uh, Queer Stories on the Swan Facebook page, uh, Instagram, queer.stories. Dot on dot the dot swan. I, I had I, to I, make it difficult. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, uh, Christo. So um, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> well, I'm fabulous. You expect that, right? <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to make things difficult. Different. Jeez. <laughs> Different. Oh, please. <laughs> Anywho, please reach out to us if you want to be on the show, or um, if you know or myself just... personally or Christo personally, you can talk to us. Um, mm. if or yeah. if you want to share your stories, absolutely anonymously. That's, that's what this show is for, anonymous or not. Mm. This is a safe space. So, yes. thank you. And, you know, we'll have anyone. We don't care who you are. Yes. Famous or not. <laughs> Although if you story. are famous, if you are famous, and oh. for some reason you hear this podcast, and you want to be on the show, yeah, please do. Reach out. Because <laughs> yeah. um, we could use the clout and attention. I'm, uh, what I mean is we're a community <laughs> station. <laughs> we're a community podcast. Uh, anyone who wants to reach out to us is more than welcome. Okay? Yeah. yeah we'll make that clear in all seriousness. Yes. Should we have a little tagline at the end or what tagline were you thinking of? I don't know. <laughs> Safe, fabulous. No. Um <laughs> that's actually a pretty good tagline. Uh you know Stay what? Fabulous, y'all. So, so thank you all so much for listening and stay fabulous, y'all. Bye. Bye.